各位弟兄姐妹，大家平安。May peace be with all brothers and sisters. 今天我们来查考哈该书的信息。Today we are going to be studying the message of Haggai. 因为我们刚刚读完哈该书。Because we have just finished reading the book of Haggai. Haggai 书有非常重要的真理。And in this book, there is a very important truth. Haggai 哈巴古书的啊，哈该书的主题就是重建圣殿。And the message of the book of Haggai is to restore the temple. 通常我们在建堂的时候，常常会引用哈巴古书来作为一些勉励。And usually we will use this book to, uh, for our mutual encouragement. 建堂啊。Uh, when we are when we are setting up a, a chapel, when we are purchasing a chapel. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not very important. But we know that the physical chapel is not And the the message today is that this temple is to lie in ruins. 我们请看哈该书的第一章。Let us turn to the book of Haggai, chapter one. 哈该书第一章第一节到第四节。Haggai chapter one, verse one to four. 哈该书一章的一到四节。Haggai chapter one, verse one to four. 请读。In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month. On the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest, saying, "Two, thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, 'This people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built.' Three, then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying." Four. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled house and this temple to lie in ruins? 我们今天的晚上的主题题目就是从第四节取出来的。And the topic today comes from verse four. 神在问百姓。And that is God asking the Israelites. 你们自己住在有天花板的房屋。He says that you yourselves dwell in your paneled house. 但是我的圣殿竟然。还在荒凉的状态。But this temple is to lie in ruins. 啊，当我们有时候开车经过，有一些工地啊，他们在盖房子的时候。And when we drive past construction houses. 啊，那有时有一些地方啊，房子盖得很快。And some buildings are very quickly built. 每次经过都有进度，都不一样。And every single time we pass by, we see that there is a difference. 那很快就盖好了。And it is very quickly built. 证明这个发展商啊，这个建筑商非常厉害。And it tells us that this builder is very good. 盖的人呢，也非常的有计划。And that they have great plans. 这是有一些工程啊，我们称为烂尾，就是盖一半都盖不下去了。But then there are some construction sites where they built halfway, but they are unable to continue. 我们加拿大这里还比较少。And in Canada, it is very rare to see this case. 有一些比较穷的国家，开发中的国家，很多房子盖到一半就盖不下去。But in countries that are still starting up, there are many construction sites that will stop building halfway. 啊，甚至有一些人挖了根基就没有再盖了。And there are some that even dig their foundation, but they stop building. 里面呢就荒凉了。And the insides are all empty. 但是这是曾经发生过。不是普通的地方，而是圣殿的建筑物。And this has happened in the past, but it was not to a regular building, but it is to a temple. 曾经有十多年的一种情况啊，他们在重建的过程当中啊，竟然荒废了，没有继续盖下去。And there was about ten some years that passed when they let the temple lie in ruins. 好，那我们再先来看看哈该书的背景。So let us look at the background of the book of Haggai. Ah, 那第一章的第一节，这里说大利乌王第二年。And here it says in the second year of King Darius. 啊，我们来看看下一个图啊，这个大利乌王的第二年是指什么时候呢 ？And so what time is the second year of King Darius? 啊，就是在这个 timeline 里面。倒数第二，这是公元前五百二十年。And we see here it is the second last date, and that is 520 BC. 啊，公元前五百二十年。520 BC. 啊，这个就是大利乌王的第二年。And that is the second year of King Darius. 那在这个之前呢，发生了很多事。
And before that, many um, many things happened. 包括在公元前五百八十六年。以色列国犹大国呢被巴比伦王毁灭了。And that is that 586 BC, there were the um the Babylonians took captive of the Judah. 啊，但是神应许，经过了七十年之后，就是大概五百三十九年了，他们就回到耶路撒冷。But at 539 BC, which was about 70 years later, they returned to Jerusalem. 那那差不多在这个五百三十七年左右啊。And around the time of 537 BC, they started to rebuild the temple. That is because for the Israelites, their center of their faith is in Jerusalem. And the most important place in Jerusalem is the temple. And if they do not build up this temple, then they are unable to offer up their offerings and to live a spiritual life. But this temple, in 586 years ago, was destroyed in the year 586. But in 586 BC, the Babylonians had already destroyed it. So they now want to build it again. And now they are going to rebuild the temple. So this is about 586 BC. 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 So this is about But not long after they started to build the temple, they encountered difficulties. Ah, we're going to look at the next page, which is Ezekiel's chapter four, verse twenty-three. And let us look at the book of Ezra, chapter four, verse twenty-three. Ah, Ezekiel four, twenty-three. The book of Ezra, chapter four, verse twenty-three. Four, verse twenty-three. Now, when the copy of King Ar Artaxerxes' letter was read before Reham, Shimshai, the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem against the Jews, and by force of arms made them seize. Here it says, "At that time, they changed a king." And here it tells us that there was a change in the king. That this king did not know the situation that was happening before. And this king did not know the situation that was happening before. So, some of the opposing Jews, these Gentiles, came to accuse King Artaxerxes of being a spy. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And there were some people who went to report upon the king. And this king said to not allow the Jews to continue to build, so they wanted them to stop. And at that time, their foundation was already dug. And they were ready to build up. And everybody was very, uh, very zealous. But the government told them that they must stop. But then the government told them that they must stop. This is very hard to stop. And this is something that is very difficult to stop. So, today, if the government says, "Ah, fifty people cannot have a chance," then we have no chance. 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 We have no And since the Jew, the Jewish people of the time knew that the king of Persia wanted them to stop building, they had to stop. They were probably thinking, ah, maybe just for a few months, or for a year, or for a year, to see if the government would change their mind, let the government have a chance to change their mind. And at first, they thought that they would just stop for a few months or even half a year, and they hoped that the government would change so that they would just stop for a few months or even half a year, and they hoped that the government would change so that they can continue to build. But once they stopped, it was it wasn't a few months, but it was many years. 一停了，停了十五六年。Once they stopped, they stopped for fifteen to sixteen years. 就等到哈该书的一开头，这个大利乌王第二年。And they stopped to the point of the second year of King Darius. 就是公元前五百二十年。And that is five hundred and twenty BC. 所以差不多有十六七年的时间。So about fifteen, sixteen to seventeen years passed. We know that to start something is not easy. And we know that it's very difficult to start something. Especially when you are very filled and very zealous. But when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you are very filled and very zealous, especially when you
because everybody is already um, used to it. And the faith that they had in the beginning was already gone. For example, if you have been um, watching sermon online at home for a long time, it is very difficult for you to bring yourself to come to church. Because we are, uh, humans are humans of habit. Or if you are working out and you stop for a few months, it is very difficult for you to pick it up again. But when they stopped building this temple, it was for 15 to 16 years. And the foundation that they already had before was probably filled with moss and very dirty. But the Israelites were not worried. Because they were just minding their own business. Because they made their own houses very beautiful and it had a ceiling. But the temple of God did not have a roof. So if we think about it and if we come to church and we do not have a roof, how can we have service? In the day, the sun is shining upon us and it may rain, and during the winter, it will snow. It is very difficult to imagine, and we cannot use this building. Because even, even if you built it halfway, you are still at point zero. And when other people walk by, they'll see how come this chapel does not have a roof. And they will laugh because they will say that this chapel is not built properly. And during that time, the heart of God was very worried. That is because the Israelites have already thrown God to the side. And so this is the background of the book of Haggai. And that is that when they wanted that the temple was put to haste in for 15 to 16 years. Just like if your car runs out of batteries and you're unable to start it. Then you need some sort of power to jumpstart your car. And spiritually, we also need to have a jumpstart and we have to reboot ourselves. And so there are two very important prophets that came at this time, and that was Haggai and Zechariah. 今天跟明天呢，就看看哈该到底怎么样帮助信仰复兴，让大家对重建圣殿有热心、有决心。And so today and tomorrow we will study about how the prophet Haggai was able to revive the faith of the Israelites.所以我们今天也是很重要。And today it is very important for us.重要的并不是重建物质的殿，买一个新的会堂而已。and it's not just focusing on the physical temple and to buy a new chapel. But how can we rebuild our own faith? And we see here that the author Haggai, his, the meaning of his name is a festive joy. We know that when there are um, events on the calendar, people are very happy. But for the Israelites, the only events that they celebrate is ones that are related to their faith. And every single event is related to God. For example, our, our evangelical service and spiritual convocation. And we have many different events and, and calendar dates that happen. But those dates are not very important. But the most important date that we must remember is the evangelical service and spiritual convocation. 
Because this is related to God and God will bless us. So next month, our evangelical service and spiritual convocation will happen. And are you ready for this? And if you observe the events that happen spiritually, then God will give you joy. And why is the name Haggai very important? That is because he is to encourage everyone to rebuild the temple. And if you cannot rebuild the temple, then how are you supposed to observe all these events? And if you do not observe these events, how do you have joy? So everything is related to one another. Today it is just the same. If we do not rebuild our faith, it doesn't matter where we go take a vacation because we will not be happy. Nowadays, people are saying, when can I take a vacation? I've been stuck here for a long time. Are you super happy when you go take a vacation? If you go, you may be very happy, but once you return, you're just the same. You have a bunch of bills that you must pay off. And you have to go back to your work that you do not like. And now when you take a vacation, you have to quarantine for two weeks. So the happiness of this world is very short term. But true joy comes from God. The time that Prophet Haggai was a prophet was a very short time. He only had a few oracles from um from June 1st to September 24th of the same year. So his his work was only for three months. But God worked with him. He only spoke three oracles and he but then the, the faith of the Israelites grew. Everybody serves in their own ways. And some people may be able to serve for their whole life. But some people may have a very short life or they may serve for a very short time. But the length of your servitude is not important. The most important thing to remember is when you are serving the Lord, is God abiding with you? And let us look at the the topic of theme. the theme of the book. And that is to put God first. And then we have to rebuild the spiritual temple. Because everybody has their own spot. Because when we come into the chapel, the usher will tell you where you are to sit. It is all the same where you sit. But there are some locations in a table that is very important. For example, when there is a work meeting and there is a very long table, the chairman will sit in his in, in his own chair. And the place that a king sits is his own throne. So today we have to ask ourselves a question. Where does God sit? And of course he is sitting in the heavenly throne. And that is the biggest location. But once God enters our heart, what place do we give to God? Maybe we won't give God the biggest space. Some people give God just a regular spot. When God is just important as his own family and his career. And some people place God at the very side. Because they believe that everything else is more important. 
I will I will come to church when I have time. 或者是我有空有时间我才来替神做工。Or when I have time, I will come work for the Lord. 啊，当时的百姓啊，就是将神放在一个可有可无、不是太重要的位置。And the people of that time put God in a very mediocre place. Ah, 没有把神放在最重要的位置 And they do not put God in the most important spot. 我们看下一页啊，我们看来研究一下为什么他们会停工呢 ？So let us think about why did why the people stop to stop rebuilding the temple. 刚刚我们讲了第一个原因，就是因为政府下令他们停工了 And the first reason we spoke of this before, and it was because the government told them to stop. 就是我们刚刚读过的以斯拉记四章二十三节，遇上困难。And that was from Ezra chapter four, verse twenty-three, when they encountered difficulties. 啊，那王下令让他们用强迫他们停工。And the king forced them to stop. 那我们想一个问题啊。So let us think about a question. 如果圣殿重建是属于神旨意的，为什么他们会遇到困难？ If rebuilding the temple is according to the will of God, then why did they encounter difficulties? In our belief, one thing, if it's according to God's will, it should be done smoothly. From what we know, if it is according to the will of God, everything should go smoothly. Then why does God want them to rebuild? But after a while, He changes His mind and wants them to stop. Then why does God want them to rebuild? So why is it that when God told them to rebuild the temple and they started off, the king changed and forced them to stop? No, why would this happen? So why would this happen? We need to first think about this question. So we have to think about this question. Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this task? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it because God's power is not strong enough to accomplish this? Is it And God will change the hearts of every single king. So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows the new king to lead the new people? So why is it that God allows And that is to test the Israelites. You, these people, today will come back to help me rebuild the temple. Today, you are all coming back to try to rebuild a temple. Everyone is very kind. And everybody has a great heart. This is very good. And this is very good. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. But I want to see what happens when they encounter difficulties. If you say it's okay, I will go mine something else. 政府的法令我们也不能违背。We cannot go against the law of the government. 那慢慢慢慢你就开始改变你的生活方式。Then slowly you will change your way of life. 慢慢慢慢你就会表现出神并不是在我心中那么重要。And slowly you will start to show that God is not as important in your heart. 这个是就是考验。And this is a trial. Actually, every relationship needs to be tested. So, there is a Chinese saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad luck meets good fortune." So, in Chinese, there is a saying, "Bad But for the Israelites, when they encountered difficulties, they went to mine
And slowly they started to live a self-centered life. And every single one of us has to live our life. And we are living our life, and it seems that we are all the same. But we are all different. Because in our hearts there is a most important spot. And this spot is the greatest chair. So we have to ask ourselves, especially once we believe in God, who is sitting in this most important seat in our life? For majority of the people, they are the most important. And what does this mean? And many people say, it is my life, so I am in control. I am interested in this. These are my dreams. These are the things that I'm pursuing. And if you sit down to have a chat with someone and they often say, I do this and I like this, then you will know that they they are very um, self-centered. Especially when this world is teaching you that you must be yourself. And you have to live for your own happiness. And this is what the world and society is telling us to do. So when we are sitting in the most important seat, then where does God sit? We know that once you sit in a spot, someone else cannot come to take the same seat. And if you are sitting in the most important seat in your heart, then Jesus indeed has to move somewhere else. <laughs> And it may be that God that our Lord Jesus will be pushed to the outer circle. So from the moment that we wake up to the moment that we sleep. How many times do we think about our Lord Jesus? Many times we are very busy and we don't have the time to think about Jesus. And we are very busy and we are very we are blindly busy. Because we are rushing to many places and doing many things for our children. And we have made our lives so full. But in the end, we will realize that we aren't very happy. And we are lacking. And we have to self-reflect. Let us turn back to Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. Verse 2. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. And we see here that the Israelites at the time had an excuse. Because they said that the time has not come. Uh, 15 to 16 years has passed, but they still said that the time has not yet come. And it is not that the time of God has not arrived. But that is because everyone is living in their own bubbles and in their own world. And we see here in the photo that this person keeps saying, me, me, me. And after we say this, then God won't have anywhere to be. When we sit down to talk to our families and to our brothers and sisters, if we are often talking about ourselves, and, and we are talking about how we should live our life and how we should make our plans pan out, then we have to think about another question. 
Did we neglect the fact that the temple is in ruins? Let us look at verse 4. 第四节, 第一章第四节, Chapter 1, verse 4. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? 神啊, and God asked the Israelites this question. He says, reflect about this. When my temple is lying in ruins, even if you are living in your paneled house, are you joyful? Are you blessed? And let us think and reflect about this by ourselves. Are we blessed by God? There are many aspects where we can see if God has blessed us. And of course, we will have enough. 如果你得到, 如果你很努力工作, 都还没有足够的话, but if you are working very hard, but you are not satisfied, then there may be a problem. Not enough. Not enough. If we are working very hard, but, uh, um, but it is not enough, then 第二, there is another aspect that we have to reflect upon. That we have gained a lot, but we are not happy. And we still feel very empty. So at this time, we have to think if our, the temple in our heart is in ruins. And this is the topic that we are discussing today, is the temple of God lying in ruins. And there are three aspects. First, is our spiritual life in ruins? When, in the beginning, when we are reading the Bible and praying at home, it is something we always do. But if your spiritual life is in ruins, then you may pray very little at home. And when you are praying, you are not focused. And you have not read the Bible in a very long time. And you don't even know where you placed your Bible. Then it may be that your spiritual life is in ruins. And next is, is your servitude and ministry in ruins? In the past, you may have been very zealous serving God. And whatever the church schedules you, you will not refuse it. But now you are not interested. When the church board members tell you to do something, if you can push it away, you won't take it. Then your servitude life is in ruin. And next is our is our heart of worship in ruins? Do we come to church? Especially now that the pandemic has gone on for a while, and the government is requiring our students to go back to school. And you also go outside to buy groceries and do your daily tasks. But you are scared to come to church. So why is it that your the your life of worship is in ruins? So when your life is not being blessed by God, then you have to rethink and reflect. So the next page tells us that change starts from self-reflection. Let us look at chapter 1, verse 5. Verse 5. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And this is very important because to consider our ways is to have self-reflection. We have to look back at the path that we walked and see how much we have gained. 
Many times, if we do not reflect, we don't know where the problem has occurred. For example, if someone is spending their money but not keeping track of it. And they make a lot of money. However, because they don't keep track of where their spendings are going, they don't know what happened. So the Bible tells us that we have to reflect. And let us look at verse 6 to see um, how we have to reflect. Verse 6. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns wages to put into a bag with holes. 一般来说, so normally, if we work very hard, then we will gain much. If you had sown much, then you should bring in a lot. But what's very strange is that even though you have sown much, you are bringing in little. And you eat, but you are not full. And you have clothes, but you are not warm. 诶, so how is this happening? What problem has occurred? And we have to think and reflect about our own behavior. And so all of these have told us that there is only one reason. And that is that we, are, we do not have the blessing of God. You can work very hard. But if God does not bless you, then you are working for no reason. And you see the photo where the money bag is very full. But if God does not bless you, and God puts a few holes in your bag of money, then your money will keep falling out. And you will have lots of extra spendings. Or your children may be very bad. Or you have lots of worries and you have to spend a lot of money purchasing um, medicine. And you are not at peace and you do not have blessings. So today we have to reflect to see if we are living in this type of situation. On the outer appearance, it may seem that we are doing okay, but we have to think and reflect um, with ourselves to see if this is happening. So why are we not receiving blessings? And the most important thing is because we have ignored our faith. And we have ignored God and we have ignored the temple. And God will not bless us. And if we are focusing with our own um, experience, with our own own work, then everything is very sudden. Let us look at verse 10. Verse 10. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withhold its fruits. 11. For I called for a drought on the land, and the mountains on the grain, and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, a man and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. So what does this tell us? It tells us that it is very easy for God to bless us. But if God does not bless us, it is very easy for everything to disappear. And if you are a farmer, then you will have this type of experience. If you work very hard to sow, but it does not rain, then what is the point? And in the summertime, many of our brothers and sisters plant fruits and vegetables and flowers in their garden. 同样的种子种下去, 每一个人的收成不一样。
and the same seed is sown into the ground, but everybody's um, harvest is different. And some people have so much harvest where they have to share with others and you still cannot finish it. And some people have such a little harvest where it's not enough for themselves and if they don't eat it, then the bugs will come and eat it before them. So what is the difference? It, it, it depends on if God blesses you. It's not just talking about farmers, but for every single career, it is, it's the same. It's the same when you study. God is helping you. There was a sister who testified, and she, uh, she placed a heavy emphasis on her faith. And she's very busy in her studies. But the spiritual convocation was coming and the church scheduled her for some work. And she did all of the holy work. But she also finished doing all of her studies. And she still did not have enough time. But she said that she cannot skip service just because she is just because she has a test. So she has made a determination to put God first. And it was very miraculous. When she finished her holy work and she went to take her test, she had a very good result. So I asked her, why do you have the determination to put God first? And so she testified. She said, Preacher, it's not because my faith is very good. It is because I have learned to be good. Because in the past semester, I was very focused in my studies. And I didn't, um, I didn't take on any holy work and I didn't really attend service. And, and I thought that because I was striving for a good grade, then my grade will be very good. But in that semester, my grade was very bad. But I spent so much time studying. And I was very focused and I did not skip any class. But my grade sucked. So she decided that if my grades are still not doing well, then I might as well go to church. I might as well take on holy work. Then her result was very good. And she spent the same amount of effort. But if God does not bless you, then there will be a great difference in your results. And everybody is faced with their own decisions. And if you throw God to the side, but you are striving forward, you may gain very little. Or do you believe in the words of the Bible? So everyone will experience self-reflection. And and here it says that we have to reflect. We don't learn from, experience. uh, we don't learn from experiences. We learn from reflecting on experience. And we learn from reflecting on our experience. And our experiences will not make us more smarter if we do not reflect on it. We have to reflect on when we were most blessed by God and think about what we were doing at that time. Where do we put God? And we have put God in the most important place at that time. So when we encounter difficulties and God is testing you, then you may have changed. And your results may have changed. So we have to reflect on our past. Let us look at chapter 1, verse 12. 
Haggai chapter 1, verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent them, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. And after the people reflected, they realized that the words of the prophet is correct. And they felt sorry for what they have done towards God. And if you feel that you have wronged God, then you will change. Because you have fallen short of the glory of God. And they have indeed fallen short of the glory of God. And God has allowed them to return from Persia back to Jerusalem very peacefully. And the reason to do this is so that they can rebuild the temple. But they did not build the temple and they built their own houses. And their own houses were better than the temple because they had a roof. And they have really fallen short of God. So what have you done for God? You haven't done much. What God has told you to do, you have not done. And we must have this determination because if we have wronged God and we realize this, then we will be revived in our faith. And we also have to realize that we have fallen short of God. So today, if we have this determination, then we can put God in His rightful place. Then we can rebuild our spiritual temple. So brothers and sisters, are you ready? Is your temple in ruins? Is your spiritual life in in ruins? Is the temple where you worship in ruins? Is the temple that you serve in in ruins? Let us sing him. 380.